god, I'm here. I'm right here where I've wanted to be for a long time. I've seen video. I had that amazing chance to meet you in Pebble Beach. <laughs> Philip Tracy, the hat maker to the Royals. Yeah. The one who did, you know, Princess's hat that put her on the map. She <laughs> should thank him a million times. Right, yes. All right, so we made this hat too. I stole it. I'm, I think I'll be leaving it with a check for it. Okay. All right, good. That's sold, sold American. Everyone, the first thing everyone wanted to know when I was leaving to come here was, are you buying a hat? Okay. So the answer is yes. Okay. So a little more serious. You know, you've been in the business a long time. Going through the exhibit, very emotional. The triumvirate of you, Alexander McQueen, and Isabel Blow was, I mean, probably it will, life seems kind of dull. Dull is the word because she yeah. was so fierce and he was. He was fierce too. Yeah. Yeah. I, he was beyond fierce. Well, they were fearless in a business, you know, working in, a, in an industry that runs on fear. You know, fashion is a fearful industry. Everybody that works in fashion is afraid about of what everybody else thinks. And she didn't really, she wasn't concerned about what anybody else thought. She was only concerned about what she thought. And she was uh, involved in my first, um, when I first worked with uh, Bentley and Rolls-Royce. And we went to Crewe and visited the factory and saw how the cars were made and saw the craftsmanship. And so she had a correlation between sort of couture hats and couture cars. So. She thought it was um, brilliant. She saw the hats everywhere. W when you look at the hats you made for her, yes, the ship. Mm. Huh. Well, Isabella the didn't ship. really see hats like everybody the else hats sees hats. You know, she saw fashion as a form of entertainment. You know, fashion is an industry; it's a business, but it is also a visual entertainer. And whether you're entertained by a beautiful hat or a beautiful car, it still creates the same desire with the customer because they can't explain why they went to spend so much money on a car or a hat, but uh, it's, it's a human emotion to desire beautiful things, and cars are beautiful things too. I was at a, at a party with 2,000 people, 3,000 people, and it was a giant party at the auto show. Mm. Two people were wearing hats. The other guy was from Parliament Funkadelic. The old George Clinton, you know, has hair oh, Okay, on. okay. It I've wasn't met George, George but one of his guys, yes. Aunt Fiddler, had a hat. And we came across the room to each other like zombies. You know, <laughs> where did you get it? He was, where did you get that hat? Give me the name, give me the dress. And I said, give me the name. His was Cha Cha's House of Ill Repute in New York. Mine was more prosaic, it's Barbara Feynman. Yes. You know, so we both had hats, but. <sighs> You know, where did the hats go? Are people that afraid? Are they afraid of being different? Well, sometimes people um, misunderstand hats, and hats really are about a personal entertainment, and it's about dressing yourself up, whether you're, it's about how it makes you feel, and hats make people feel good, and the committed hat wearer doesn't really understand people who don't appreciate hats because a hat is something to be enjoyed. It's really what a hat does for the person. And you know, a hat is a, is a conversation piece. It's a, it's a personal expression. It's really an act of bravery anymore. It, that's what it really feels like. I mean, you know, at one time hats were a conformist accessory. Now they're worn by rebels. Lady Gaga. So, you is know. Is anyone left like Isabella? Is there anyone out there? And I know it, your time you know, that was a very, very special time. Mm. Well, Isabella didn't really wear hats in a self-conscious way. She wore hats, such hats, to work. You know, she didn't really understand when people said, you know, are you going to an event or an occasion? She was <laughs> going to work. So it, it's, you know, it's, it's a marriage of the personality of the person and the hat that makes the, um, Hat look good, really. Your hats are unbelievable. The hats, your, your one off your couture hats, how, where does that come from? The wind blown veil, that hat just takes my breath away. Where does this come from? I like to show people um, new hats. So I don't think there's any point in making old hats. I don't really, I don't really, you know, 
I don't want to make 20s hats or 30s hats. I want to make 21st century hats because this is what we're living in. And people react to hats in a different way, in a more unusual way today than they did before. You know, hats are talking points and they create conversation and they create interest and they always have since the beginning of time. And people will always embellish their heads because everyone has a head and everyone uses their head whether in, in different ways to display their personality, whether it's with their hair or with a hat or with jewellery or with earrings. Shoes. But, but yeah. you know, when you meet somebody, you meet their face, you don't meet their foot. Your inspiration, can you really make a hat from anything? You know, everything's possible. So I, I believe in possibility, not impossibility. And I have an opportunity to influence how people see hats in the 21st century. And that's a very exciting position to be in because uh, it's a big old world out there. You have hats from 1996 that would influence people in the 21st century. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. You do? Yeah. Could you just tick, tick off just a couple of your all-time favorites, some that you were really proud of? Yeah, I mean, I like the ship hat and the castle because they're about uh, the possibility to create, to make people dream. And everyone's dreaming in some format today, whether they're buying, you know, a car or a hat. They're all buying, people are buying a dream. It's still, it's just, you know, it depends how you look at it. You know, it's just some fabric and some feathers, or it's just some metal and some rubber. But to some to people who are, you know, in love with it, it's, they're buying dreams.